In this episode, I'm going to show you how to create your very first macro, introduce you to comments, and talk about pre-execution commands, or commands that are executed prior to anything else in the macro actually running. To get started, the very basic for macros are is that it requires a sub main and a return. This is the very first function or subroutine that is um, actually used, and so the macro is specifically looking for this subroutine. If it does not exist, the macro will fail. Uh, once you have this created, uh, let's do something easy and go ahead and create the first macro. That does an output screen to a request that says, hello world. The output for every request is just called echo, and this just does a, um, a display that only you can see in game. Let's go ahead and save this. Swap over to our app request screen. Type Mac and text was the name. And hello world, it just executed our very first command. Now I'm able to change this to different color using a special plugin called Color Echo. And say I want to make this yellow. To make this yellow this is a special command. And there's many plugins in Mac request that let you do special commands. So I've added color echo AY for yellow. Let's go back over. Mac text. Now it says hello world in yellow. I'm also able to get rid of the Mac request 2 logo there, uh, or it says MQ2 by putting a B at the end of it. And then I can swap back over. And again, it says hello world. And that's your very first macro created. Um, now I'll talk to you a little bit about comments. Comments are just uh, notes or reminders that you're going to put in to your macro so that you can have easy reference for later. Uh, comment just starts out with the pipe symbol and you can put a text here. So as you can see, uh, this command is here. It doesn't actually do anything. Um, it's just there for your reference later. You can do a single line comment like that, or you can put a line of code, and then say you don't want to use it right now, you can just comment it out temporarily, come back later and change it so you don't have to delete your code. Alternatively, you can actually use comment blocks, put in a pipe, two asterisks, and then whatever comments you want in between. Whatever is in between, this comment block will not get processed, even if it's a subroutine name because it will not look in between the, the comment blocks. You'll close a comment block by putting two asterisks in a pipe. Those are the basics for comments. In order to see uh, more about comments, you can go to the, the wiki page on the main site. Uh, so this is the main wiki. You can go down to macro reference, under references. And when you scroll down there, there's macro fundamentals, there's comments. This just shows you about the comments. Uh, next I'll talk about pound commands or pre-execution commands. These are run, uh, these are loaded into memory before the macro actually otherwise processes any subroutines. So the first one, as you saw, uh, is going to be the turbo command. This is just a basic command that tells the macro how fast or slow to run. The standard is 20, so if you want a macro to run slower, you can put 10 if you want it to basically not use turbo, you can put it to 1. Um, for the MMO bugs compile, you can make this run up to 500. Uh, the pros and cons of this is that the macro will run faster, but it's going to eat more resources. So if you have a really long macro, you might want it to run a little bit faster to process through. If you have a really short macro, you don't even need turbo. Uh, next up on the page is going to be define. Define is going to take a phrase and replace it with another phrase. Um, if you have spaces, uh, you're going to want to use quotation marks. So for our example, we're going to say that we want to define hello world with Pete Sampras. Notice that I'm using quotation marks because there's spaces. Save this when I run the macro now. It 
should say Pete Sampras, and it does. So that's how you use it to find. Um, the advantages of this are is that you can do something that is like your character's class and level, um, and you can replace that throughout the macro without having to change anything. This is specifically useful if you use some of my macros that have custom I and I uh, settings that are based on your character names or classes. Next on the list is include. Include allows you to include another file name. Um, so if you create a file such as spellroutines.include, which I have loaded over here, this is a, basically a macro without a subroutine main that will be able to cast spells for you. Um, these includes can do whatever they're created to do, um, but it's just a macro without a subroutine that you can call in order to access information that somebody else has created or you've created. And that way you don't have to recreate the wheel every time it happens. So in this case, I'll go ahead and include uh, spell routines include and that's just going to now access this file that I've got located in the macro folder so now I can access it and call spell just by adding a line that's in there so if I want to cast complete heal I can now access that routine just by doing a call cast, and cast is one of the subroutines in this spell and routines include, and it's going to cast the spell using gem one. Includes a very powerful, and it makes your ability to write a macro that much easier because you don't have to write all that stuff yourself. Uh, finally, there's events and chat, and chat is a special event that applies only to chat channels. Um, an event is just something that happens in game, and when that happens, it triggers the event. So I can create an event, and then an event name, such as um, entered, and say when I enter a zone, it will now trigger this event. So then I'll create a sub event with the name entered, and echo. I have entered zone.name and that's I'm just do zone and that's just going to tell me the current zone that I've entered whenever it sees this on the screen. And that's a very um, easy example. Uh, this is just a variable that is in the base in Q2 code that allows me to say what zone I'm in. And then finally there's the chat command. So I can say group and chat guild. And that's going to process and only process chat events that are in these two channels. So if I don't want say, I wouldn't put say, but if I do want say, then I could put say there as well, and it will look for these phrases. So the example of that is this. The sub event chat, and that's the special event, is that it's a chat channel. Uh, who has actually said something and what have they said? And so this is uh, variables that get passed to the routine, and this special chat event knows that this is what it's looking for. And so it automatically looks for this, and then this echo will tell me who said it, who, what they told me, and what channel they told me. And this is all. Um, default stuff that's already custom coded. And you have now created your first macro.